tonight, what if a few hundred bucks could earn you thousands in profits almost overnight? Well, that's exactly what happened to some savvy investors who bet big on the once dying video game retailer, GameStop. It sparked a sudden roller coaster of events that seemed to shake Wall Street to its core. And the aftershocks are still being felt as the twists and turns that brought us here are explored in a new documentary featuring ABC's chief business correspondent, Rebecca Jarvis. Have you been following this story about GameStop and the stock market? The GameStop stock explosion. A struggling video game retailer somehow becoming one of the hottest stocks on the market. How did this happen? It was a Wall Street revolution led by an internet mob trying to flip the table on hedge funds and big banks. Amateur investors have been leading a wild ride on Wall Street. Their goal, making money, while also exposing deep cracks in what they say is an unfair system of the haves and the have-nots. It's not just a story about a stock, it's a story about society, about where we are now. Going after major companies and CEOs. Some people do think you should go to jail. What do you say to that? A new documentary from ABC News and our partners at Hulu, titled Game Stopped, explores the David versus Goliath showdown and the people at the center of it all. A 10-year-old San Antonio boy is getting national attention after cashing in on the GameStop stock craze. In 2019, we had been in and out of GameStop. He was, oh, I want this, I want that. I was like, OK, kid, <laughs> slow it down. That's what made me think, oh, I need to start teaching this kid about money. I understood that's a company that he loved, so that's why I bought the stock. It is interesting to watch stocks grow and watch them fall. It's like a game. Yes. Because you never know if you can lose a ton of money. No, 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 no. Or if you can make a big jump like how I did. In its heyday, GameStop was the place to go to buy video games. But with the advent of online game stores like Steam and Amazon, GameStop shuttered many of its locations. In the last five years, its stock had fallen from $40 to $5 a share. So in 2014, this hedge fund named Melvin Capital started to short the stock. Short in stock? I'll break it down. Can you see my feet? Let's say I borrow an Xbox from my friend Nate. Then I go and sell the Xbox for 500 bucks. When the price drops, I buy the Xbox back for $250. I give Nate back his Xbox and pocket the difference. I just made $250. And that's exactly what the hedge funds were hoping would happen with GameStop. What they didn't perceive was that at a certain point, bulls make money, bears make money, but pigs get slaughtered. And they were pigs. And so the GameStop saga was set in motion and it was exacerbated by the pandemic. A stock like GameStop suddenly becomes 90% of your life because you're not going out to dinner with friends. People that were spending time at home and less time commuting and less time at work and doing other things had time to go on to chat rooms and go on to boards. Forums like the subreddit Wall Street Bets attracted everyday people hoping to make a buck swapping trading tips. We're weird people. Alicia Haverland was one of them. I got into Wall Street bets on Reddit 15 months ago. I was actually playing World of Warcraft with a guy. And he goes, oh, dude, you've got to check out Wall Street bets. These guys are insane. And holy it was just chaos. No. Alicia got interested in stocks thanks to her grandmother. She would always pull us over and make us learn and explain to us that the stock market was sort of a rich person's game. But if you if you learn about it, it's not the hardest thing. And you can make money and never have to rely on the government or assistance or, or a man. If you buy, you have to be ready and willing to spend some time. Dun, dun, dun. And at the time, we had been trying to find an app that would be easier for my grandmother to play the stock market in. Reduced position here right now. And Robinhood seemed to be the easiest plug and play system. Don't think you're an investor. You don't need to become an investor. You were born one. Robinhood. Founded by Vladimir Tenev and Baiju Bot, Robinhood is an app that set out to democratize trading by letting users buy and sell stocks without having to pay a commission fee. Soon, Robinhood exploded in popularity, becoming the brokerage many people on Wall Street bets use to invest. We could do exactly what the hedge funders have been doing forever. 
because we are a hedge fund when you really think about it. If everyone's got a dollar and there are six million of us in here, we have six million dollars. What do we want to put six million dollars to? All right. Boom. Yeah, we're good to go. All right, we're going to play Call of Duty, Marley. Oh, I got hit. David Dusty Monroe is a father of two who works in sales. Obviously, I'd followed GameStop stock. So I thought, what's going on behind the scenes? There was a ton of large hedge funds who had shorted the stock. I firmly believe in, in GameStop. These hedge funds were betting against it. I never want to see anybody lose a lot of money. Do I want to see the average Joe make some money? Absolutely do I want to do that. The group decided to throw their weight behind GameStop, at least in part, because of Keith Gill, a prolific poster on that Reddit forum, Wall Street Bets. He believed in GameStop's future potential and also spotted a vulnerability to exploit. Hedge funds had so heavily shorted the stock and backed themselves into a corner, there could be a giant short squeeze. Hold up, short squeeze? I'll explain. Remember my friend's Xbox we talked about earlier? Nate needs it back, but now I can't find a cheap one anywhere. The price is going up and up and up. The only one I can find is gonna cost me $1,000. So I've just lost $500. You get something called a short squeeze where a stock can go up big when the short seller can't find the stock that they sold. Those folks have to buy more stock to cover the stock that they borrowed. Enough people get on board, it can squeeze and go up. And suddenly, huge numbers of buyers come in and they take it up and you are squeezed because you can't find the stock that you need. And the next thing you know, you can be wiped out. This might be a great way to supplement my income and support a company that I believe in and that I love. So I threw the dice and let it roll. As GameStop stock rose, it was all anyone could talk about. Let's get to GameStop. GameStop. This GameStop is really something we must talk about. Almost overnight, the company's value surged from a couple hundred million to billions of dollars. My phone was going off because I have it on my Yahoo watch list. I told Jaden, I was like, you have to look at this. Like, this doesn't happen very often. There was just no way it climbed that high. From reading Reddit tonight, it is clear many of the users feel this is the average small time investor versus the big Wall Street banks. Soon, hedge fund titans like Melvin Capital started losing big money billions of dollars. And for many, investing in GameStop became a kind of social movement. I'm willing to lose every penny because it's not about the money. It's about sending a message. But on the morning of January 28th, with the stock near all time highs, their plans got interrupted. I opened up the app. I saw that you could no longer press the buy button in Robinhood. And I said, holy Robinhood restricted trading of 13 stocks, including GameStop. A broker calling themselves Robinhood, let's think about the irony of that, tells their users, we're not going to allow you to buy and only sell. That's crazy. Conspiracy theories started to fly on social media. Robinhood has just shown themselves to be a piece of company and a shell for the rich, so this is why you need to boycott them now. And I ended up smashing my phone. Pretty, uh, pretty badly. By day's end, GameStop had tanked 44%. And even though most brokerages had restricted trading of GameStop, Robinhood became the poster child for the rage because of that promise to democratize trading. Customers have been showing up right here at Robinhood's headquarters, venting frustration that they can't get in touch with anybody about some of their account issues. Someone allegedly threw dog feces at the front door. Robinhood CEO Vlad Tenev writing that the moves to limit trading of specific stocks was not because we wanted to stop people from buying these or any stocks, but because of an increase on mandatory collateral on the service. The outrage led to a hearing on Capitol Hill and major backlash for the company's co-founder and CEO. Some people do think you should go to jail. What do you say to that? Well, I think it was based on this false premise that was harmful of me somehow colluding with hedge funds to do this, which was completely made up out of thin air, right? Like there's no evidence for it. And I think it was completely wrong. 
I guess the question is, if you are attempting to democratize trading here, yeah. and if an event like this can make it so that your customers don't have the same advantages in the market as a hedge fund, for example, have you failed? Well, I'm not really sure what advantages hedge funds have. Well, I mean, on January 28th, your customers couldn't buy a stock that hedge funds could. Our customers couldn't open positions, but it's not like throughout this process, hedge funds didn't, uh, didn't feel any pain. I mean, you saw the Melvin Capital, they lost a lot of money through this process. So I think the story of hedge funds winning and retail customers losing um, is not quite the whole story here. It's actually in a way much broader than that because it's a systemic issue. Like most broker dealers, many broker dealers had restrictions in place. This not only affected Robinhood, every company or most companies that were offering stocks put restrictions in place to some degree because nobody has infinite amounts of money. The Wall Street Bets saga you know, was a movement. The people who didn't previously feel they had a voice, finding that they do have a voice and they can make an impact. And by raising their voices together, it can shine a light on areas of our society and or in this case in our financial system where a light you know, needs to be shined. Dusty is now trying to start a class action lawsuit after selling his shares at a 30% loss. Alicia is still holding 200 of her original shares. I hope that this energizes people. They just put Wall Street on notice and we got in the room in a system that is designed for you to never be in the room. And we are. And it's a game that's still playing out with new winners and losers every day. And just last week, GME stock soared again, surpassing its January 28th closing price. Today, it tanked nearly 17%. Is the game over? I don't think so. And GameStop is now streaming on Hulu. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.